Hello everybody. So um, before continuing the uh, rest of the pro the, the flow sheet of the uh, uh, water system, um, I thought it's a good idea to uh, do the calculations manually and compare them to what we find in Aspen Plus, just to refresh the information and to understand the how the calculations are made. Um, so um, I'm I'm, I'm uh, gonna uh, do the manual calculations for the uh, pipe. Uh, which is only one segment. Um, I just to keep you uh, with me on the same page. I have these are the uh, the equations that that I use. It's Bernoulli equation. I have two um, two uh, inlet and uh, one two, two two points. The inlet and the outlet of the pipe. This is the equation. Um, it's kind of an energy balance equation between the uh, forms of energy at the inlet and the forms of energy at the outlet. We have here the P1. Uh, the pressure, the velocity, the elevation, uh, which is the kinetic energy and potential energy. This is the H pump. If, if I have a pump, then I'm going to put the uh, the energy of the pump here. This is the outlet pressure. This is the outlet velocity. This is the outlet elevation. And these are the losses. Um, the losses will, are calculated from uh, two uh, sources. There is the frictional uh, losses which is calculated from the friction factor uh, multiplied by L over D multiplied by V square over 2G and there are other uh, which this is what we call the major losses and there are the minor losses which is uh, either from sudden expansion sudden contraction um, uh, if we have uh, elbows if we have fittings or anything like that uh, each one of these will have a value of K and this K will be multiplied by V square over 2G um, and this friction factor is uh, either you get it from Moody diagram, um, it's a kind of very famous diagram in fluid mechanics, or from the friction factor equation, which is uh, this equation, which is going to be solved by trial and error to get the value of F based on the value of Reynolds number, the value of epsilon over D. Um, so this, this is what we, we have. I put all the information that we have from the Aspen Plus file and the flow rate, the diameter, the area, the length of the pipe. Um, I calculated, of course, the area from the diameter, and um, I'm, I'm, I didn't. I, I just put the, the very basic uh, parameters and calculated the rest. Um, dealing with millimeter. Uh, uh, okay, so so before that, I have here the inlet conditions and the outlet conditions here. Um, the, here the pressure. Which are the parameters that I'm gonna plug in this equation? The pressure. I use the Pascal because millimeter water is is not an easy unit to use. So I I use the um, millimeter water. I mean the Pascal and atmosphere um, just instead of of the uh, millimeter water. And here is the velocity. Um, I calculated from the flow rate and the area divided both, and we got this velocity. And um, uh, what I did, I I just uh, put all the rest of the information, the V1, uh, which is calculated the same way because of the same diameter and the same flow rate and um, the elevation is zero for both which is what we start stated in the beginning that the pipe rise is zero and I calculated the losses from this equation which is exactly um, uh, this FL over DV square over 2G um, and I got the physical properties to get the Reynolds number, which is the rho and the viscosity, and got the Reynolds number. And then I used the same epsilon that I have here, which is the roughness, and got epsilon over D. And used the goal seek to uh, calculate the value of uh, friction factor. The, the, um, I, 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 what I did, I just put any value and then used uh, goal seek to put this equation to the value of zero by changing uh, um, this cell and this is the value that I got. I, I just put the equation uh, both on the same side so I put this plus this should be zero and this is the friction factor that I got. So this is all what I did and the final th thing I, um, I did is to calculate the pressure. So I calculated the pressure by getting all the right hand side minus all these uh, things. Of course the velocities are the same so these two um, uh, terms will cancel out. Um, I put disease because I'm gonna use them um, after some time. I don't have any pump and I have the losses that I calculated from the friction factor. So this is what I have here. 
um, and at the end of the day I have the pressure um, in Pascal or, or let it in atmosphere to be easy it's 5.81 uh, 819 it was 5.849 so to check the results um, for the streams let's make it in atmosphere this is 5.849 this is uh, the, the inlet pressure and the outlet pressure I got it 5.819 and this is 5.819 there is a little change in the fourth decimal place which is not it's not a big deal I am I'm, I'm very very close to the actual results and here's what I mentioned before there are two uh, or the the losses are split into the frictional pressure losses which is um, very very close it's uh, 3050 and I got it 3057 so it's very close and there are no elevation pressure drop. Um, the elevation pressure pressure losses will show up when I have a difference in elevation and this is what I can do here if I put the uh, elevation as 5 meters I'm gonna run the file and show see, see the results again what I'm gonna do here is to put z1 equals to 5 and this is all what we're gonna get um, just to change it and here you'd see that 48 uh, 48903 I have 49034 it's pretty close and uh, the total pressure loss is 51953 it's 52092 it's again very very close um, and the uh, outlet pressure is um, 55 point let's put it in atmosphere it's 5.336 I got it 5.335 so it's pretty close to the outputs that we got here. You can do the same thing for pipelines. Um, it's gonna be just different because in this case you need to take into uh, uh, consideration that there are two pipes, so you have to uh, put that uh, in the calculations. So you'd have, um, maybe for the pressure losses, you would have more than one, uh, one part. You will split it into different parts and add the total losses for each part. Um, and in case of, of, of change in the diameters, then you need to uh, take into account the um, sudden expansion and sudden contractions and, and this, this is going to make it a little, um, or it's, it's not going to be difficult, but it's going to take more time. Um, I, I just wanted to, to do this manual calculations uh, and compare it to what we have in Aspen Plus just to refresh the information and, and I, I don't want users to be just users putting numbers and don't understand what is behind that. The, the software is a very, very nice tool and useful tool that can save a lot of time and give more accurate results. This is what we saw here, it's a small difference but I, I believe that this is more accurate especially because it can calculate the physical properties quickly or, or more accurately. I, I have here the density uh, with this value. It might not be very, very, very uh, accurate. The viscosity might not be very accurate. So having more accurate results will produce more, uh, I mean, more accurate inputs will produce more accurate input uh, results. But at the end of the day, uh, the user must be aware of what's going on. Um, you have to have an engineering sense to have a feeling of numbers and this is not going to happen uh, or you're not going to get this sense if you are just clicking on the buttons and putting inputs and getting outputs without thinking about them. So it's important to analyze the, the results and to know how the calculations are going. Um, so I, th I saw this helps and I'm going to see you in the next video, inshallah. Goodbye.